I'd like to take a moment to discuss the situation in Tanzania. Tanzania has historically been one of our preferred investment destinations, given both its geological endowment and the predictability afforded by our mine development agreement. Under the agreement, we have continued to operate and invest in a true tier one gold asset for the benefit of all of the stakeholders. An analysis of the cash flows in and out of GATA since it was developed in 1999 shows that over this period, the mine has delivered more than a billion dollars to the Tanzanian government in the form of royalties, corporate taxes, and employee income tax. The government, through tax and royalty payments, has been a beneficiary since day one, with its cumulative share of total benefit from GATA increasing as the mine life progresses. In terms of the net cash distributions to stakeholders, after accounting for repaying of capital and obviously funding the operation, the net share for the government of Tanzania thus far has been about 55% and our share 45% in nominal terms. When one takes into account the time value of money, the government share is obviously significantly higher. We are one of the largest taxpayers in Tanzania, certainly the largest in the mining sector, and have received recognition from the authorities to this effect. As GATA goes from strength to strength, it will be an important tool in enabling Tanzania to realize its goal of reaching middle-income status. In addition to making the requirement to list 30% of the Tanzanian mining operations on the local stock exchange, during late June, over the course of less than a week, the government of Tanzania tabled, debated and approved a number of laws that could alter the landscape of the country's extractive sector. Whilst we are seeking a dialogue with the authorities to gain clarity on how these new rules may affect our operation, given the protection afforded by our mine development agreement, we have continued to operate as normal at GATA. It has, however, been necessary to pay on a without prejudice basis the additional two percentage point on royalty on revenue and also the 1% clearing fee in order to ensure the continued export of our gold dore bars. During this capital investment phase, we are currently operating GATA on a self-funding basis, given the higher royalties, combined with the continued lockup of VAT receivables on eligible inputs at this mine. As a precautionary measure, our subsidiaries have initiated arbitration to protect the status of our mine development agreement. We have, as I mentioned earlier, continued to seek dialogue with the government on the issue of the new law and its associated impact and will continue along both tracks until we find the resolution. This is a situation that requires patience, diplomacy, and a need to take a long-term view. We must balance the optionality of this important long-term asset and the goodwill of our GATA and Tanzanian shareholders whilst planning for different contingencies and remaining careful custodian of our shareholders' capital. Free cash flow has declined due to the planned higher capex, stronger currencies, and the working capital lockup in continental Africa. Gator in Tanzania is the most significant contributor to the VAT lockup, amounting to $40 million. We continue to expend significant effort in engaging with the authorities to recover VAT and fuel levies across continental Africa. However, this remains an area of concern and continues to impact free cash flow generation across our business, whilst also exposing the group to adverse impacts of the devaluation of local currencies in these jurisdictions. Patrick Mann from Deutsche Bank. Can you clarify what the mine development agreement covers? I know you said that the government hasn't approached you to uh, renegotiate that, but that you are paying the additional royalties and the export clearing. So, so what is covered by the mine development agreement that's not covered by the changes in legislation and then the other thing is um, you know you've obviously got the Gator underground project um, that's kicking off now does this kind of regulatory headwind um, put that at risk the mine development agreement uh, in respect of Gata covers the terms of the investment going into Gator in order to provide stability and primarily it provides a range of fiscal and uh, 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 economic sort of framework within which uh, the mine operates and there is an adverse uh, variation clause in the mine development agreement which requires both parties to sit down and have a discussion in the first instance. 
fact. It's not that we have, uh, A, not paid taxes. We have demonstrated we have paid over a billion dollars of taxes, both collected and borne uh, to the Tanzanian government. And where uh, the government has had issues in the past, we have actually found compromise grounds within the mine development agreement in terms of capital allowances, in terms of local levies, etc. So where we stand at present is that uh, the, we are firmly of the view that the mine development agreement stands, and certainly the government hasn't disputed that. Uh, what we are seeking is a dialogue with the government saying that given their new legislation, how does this impact us in the context of the mine development agreement? And any negotiations we do will be in the context of the new mine development agreement as opposed to the laws which have been promulgated. So that's in respect of GATA. Secondly, in terms of uh, the prospects of GATA, it's still a long-term asset. And without being blasé about it, jurisdictions do go through these ups and downs. If you remember, we had similar issues back in uh, Guinea going back uh, 10 years ago. We have had issues for example, in Ghana, et cetera. So one has to take a long-term view and not knee-jerk. So the power plant is already 80% complete, so we will complete that. The underground expansion is still going ahead because we are already you know, doing that expenditure there. It is on a self-funded basis. We go back into our planning and dis budgeting discussions between now and the end of the year. And like how we review the plans of all of the assets, we'll review the plan of GATA as well in the context of where those negotiations end up or don't end up before the end of this year.